Hey guys, so in this video we are talking all about the My Macros Plus app and why I actually prefer it over my fitness pal. And just as a side note, I have filmed this type of video before. Um, I think it's three years old now, maybe four years old, and it was time for an update because the My Macros Plus app just came out with a huge update and kind of changed a lot of things. So I wanted to go through it again for you guys so you can fully understand one, how to work it, and two, all of the features that it does include. So right off the bat, you're probably, or some of you might be wondering what My Macros Plus is, and it's basically a macro tracking app, um, similar to MyFitnessPal in the sense that it's for people who track their calories, or more specifically, their macros. And in my opinion, it's better than MyFitnessPal if you are tracking macros specifically. Um, you could obviously track only calories with it too, but it's just more geared towards people who are tracking their macros, whereas MyFitnessPal kind of gears it towards calories only, even though your macros are included in that too. Um, but they I put a big emphasis on your calories right off the bat. So I'm going to break down the differences between the two apps, what I like and dislike about each of them. And hopefully this will just give you some more insight um, and kind of introduce you to something new if you have been using MyFitnessPal for a long time. All right, so first thing we're gonna talk about is pricing. So MyFitnessPal is a free app initially when you go to download it off the app store, but the free version does not let you input your custom macros in grams. It does not let you do different daily goals. So if you are somebody who carb cycles or you have different macros for whatever reason, um, you can't switch back and forth without being on MyFitnessPal Premium. You can't see the amount of protein, carbs, and fats per meal. And you cannot see the calorie goals per meal without being on the premium version. You can't see your nutrient dashboard, so the breakdown of all your micronutrients, and then as far as um, ads and customer support, you can't get rid of the ads or get premium customer support without being on the premium upgraded version. So the premium version of MyFitnessPal is $9.99 per month, and you can choose to pay that for the full year of $49. And then my macros plus, if you go to the app store, it is $2.99 initially, but after that you get all of the awesome features for free. There's no monthly fee or anything like that. So compared to my fitness pal, as far as the pricing goes, I think you're just getting a lot more bang for your buck as far as the free version of each app goes. Um, and I just personally really like the layout of my macros plus better than my fitness pal. My fitness pal, like I said earlier, is kind of geared more towards total calories. I also really dislike how they put your exercise or your activity calories burned at the top and they subtract that if you input it. And that confuses a lot of people because most people who download these apps I say most, some of you are not gonna have this goal, but most people have the goal of fat loss. So if you are inputting what your exercise was for the day, my, my fitness pal adds those calories back in and that kind of confuses people making them think that they can just eat back what they burned. But if you're doing that, you're not gonna be losing any weight, you're gonna be maintaining weight. So I dislike how they kind of do that and confuse people. My macros plus, pretty straightforward. Um, so you will input what your protein, carbs, and fat should be, whether a coach has given that to you or you've calculated it on your own, whatever the case may be. Um, and then at the top, it will show you just what you need to eat for the day, and that's it. There's no confusion. <laughs> so once you go into the My Macros Plus app, um, like I mentioned before, you can have ideally as many sets of macros that you want. So if you're somebody who has two sets of macros, like you have rest day and training day macros, or maybe you have high carb day and low carb day macros, whatever the case may be, you can have different profiles that you can easily switch back and forth. So all you have to do is go to the set nutritional goals, and this is how you set whatever your macros are regardless. Um, you can see I've been using the app for years now. I have all these different profile goals of different phases of my journey. Um, so I have my current set and then, you know, everything that from pregnancy macros to different cuts I've done in the past, and it's kind of cool to look back and see where my macros were set at different periods of time. So that's all saved. Um, and then you can also go into the nutrition calculator. So it can kind of help you figure out what your macros should be and give you a general idea 
Um, generally speaking, this isn't the most accurate way to figure out what your macro should be, but it's a good starting point. And then tracking this along with your weight, along with your biofeedback for a few weeks can give you a better idea if you need to start at a higher or lower intake. So that's a nifty little feature that's in there. Okay, so now you know how to input what your macros are going to be. Um, I wanted to note that you can also track your body weight as well as water intake all within the app, which I think is awesome. So to track your body weight, if you just go over to the little icon on the bottom that looks like a graph, um, you will see your body weight scale. And if you will see mine is showing the average of three months and you can look at the lifetime which i think is really cool um you can see obviously when i started gaining weight for pregnancy and then postpartum which is just really cool to me um, but anyway to add your body weight in for the day click the eyeball on it and then you just go where it says add body weight and then input what it is for that day and then it will automatically um, put it to the list here and show you the trends over time so to track water you go back to your daily food log um, and then if you scroll over to the right on this little section on the top um, you can add in water in ounces which I think is awesome so uh, right off the bat this is what it looks like when you have no food added um, on the top it will show you how many days in a row that you've tracked to hold you accountable um, and then it will also show you what you have left for the day as far as protein carbs and fats and right now you'll note that they are red as you get closer to your goals they will turn yellow and then green is like what you should be striving to get them all in by the end of the day and then if you swipe over once um, it will show you what your macros actually are and how close or how much food you've already eaten towards those goals and then you can change your macro goals right here by clicking that little um, pen and paper button and then it will pop up with all of the macro goals that are already input into your app and then you can pick it if you need to change it out for a different set of macros for that day. So it can all be done really easily right there. Um, and then as far as adding food into your app, because that's the whole purpose of this, there are a few different ways you can do that. So the first way, if you swipe over, um, you'll see a list of things here. You can search the food. And as I stated earlier, the My Macros Plus database, it has 5 million foods. Um, so generally speaking, you can probably find a lot of what you're looking for by searching it. But if you, let's say, have the box of something like you're eating Cheerios, for example, and you want to just easily track those Cheerios without searching, you can just scan the barcode on the box. So anything that's packaged, I would suggest scanning it in just because it's right there. It's gonna be the most accurate and it's gonna be exactly what you're eating. Um, another really cool thing about this app too is you can just take a picture of the nutrition label and it will scan it in for you. And with both the barcode and the nutrition label scanner, just double check it. Sometimes it makes some slight errors and that's just because this is essentially like a robot, right? It's a computer, so it's not perfect, just like humans are not perfect, so just double check it. Um, most of the foods that I scan in are pretty spot on, if not like one gram off, so it's not a huge deal, um, but I always just double check it to make sure. So those are like the main three ways to input a new food, but what's also really cool is that My Macros Plus saves your custom or favorite foods for a quick reference really fast. So all you have to do is go to the custom and faves tab, and then you can even break it down by what type of food you're looking for. Um, you can pull this down and search the custom and favorite foods, um, but everything that I've ever tracked is in this list. Um, and occasionally I'll go through and I'll erase things if like I haven't eaten them in like a year or six months or so just to make the list a little bit shorter. But pretty much all my common foods are in this list for easy access. Um, and then if you look at this little food menu, recent foods, so I'm somebody who likes to eat a lot of the same foods on a daily basis, so I'm constantly referring to this recent food section and I'm just inputting those um, every day. And then you can also look at frequent foods, so that also makes sense if you're somebody who eats a lot of the same foods 
daily. So those are all right there. Um, and then you can also search by brand or by type, which to be honest, I don't really use that often, but I know some of our clients do. It is an option. And then let's say you know the macros of something that you're eating. Maybe you are following a recipe online and it gives you the macros. Um, and we'll get into recipes in a second, but this is a way to fast track. So if you go to the fast track, you can just input what the actual macros are and save it into your whatever meal you're eating for the day. So those are the different ways that you can input certain foods. I think there's a lot of options. I think that at first it can seem pretty overwhelming, especially if you're only searching the foods and all these different types are coming up. But like I said, if you can scan it in with a nutrition label or barcode, do that. If it's something generic like a banana, just search it and then you know, if it did take you a long time, or let's say you really can't find this food in the database, just go to Google, type in like, I don't know, cheesecake nutrition, for example, it will pop up with an estimation of what the macros could be. Pick something that looks decent, and then you can add it as a custom food, um, which is this big button on the bottom here. And you can put the name, the serving size, and then what the macros are. You can even take a picture and then that will always save in your custom food. So once you do things like once, it's gonna be in the app. So I think that's something a lot of people stress over, but it all goes back around to if this is something that's new to you, it just takes a little bit of time to figure it out. So don't get overwhelmed and ditch it. Give it a chance, I promise it will be worth it. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to copy a meal. So let's say I go to yesterday's foods and I want to essentially just copy all of breakfast because I'm going to eat the same exact meal today. So I just go to where it says breakfast, swipe over. So I literally move the whole meal over. There's an option to copy it. And then if you click that, you can change the serving sizes if needed, if you have a My Macros Plus account. Um, but if not, you can literally just copy it, save it to whatever meal you're trying to save, and then it's already going to be input in today's macros. Um, you can also just save that meal for quick reference if it's something that you reference a lot. So I just wanted to show that really quick because a lot of people didn't know that you could do that and it saves a lot of time if, let's say for this week, you're just planning to eat the same lunch and breakfast every day. That saves so much time right off the bat. Okay, and then the recipe feature is one of my favorite things. So. A lot of people complain that tracking macros for intricate recipes, let's say you find something online or um, I don't know, whatever the case is, you wanna make something or bake cookies and you want the exact macros. And I'm making a whole separate video <laughs> regarding this and if I already did it, I will link it. Um, but all you have to do is go to the recipes tab, click create a new recipe, name your recipe, whatever you're making, um, Estimate the total servings, or if you're following a recipe, it will probably tell you about how many servings you're making, so that's what you put there. And then you just keep it named as a serving, that's what I do. And then all you're gonna do is add all of the ingredients that you are using. Once you add the ingredients, it's going to list the serving sizes of these ingredients. Put whatever you're using for the whole recipe. So whatever the recipe calls for is what you're essentially inputting into this app. And then what it's going to do is automatically divide. And then what it's going to do is automatically divide the macros and calories by however many servings you input here and do all of the math for you. And it will give you the macros for each serving of whatever you're making. So I do this if I make chocolate chip cookies from scratch or cheesecake or chili or honestly, whatever you're cooking, this is so easy to do. And then if this is if you're thinking like oh my god that's so much work to do all the time um it does save your recipes in here so all you have to do is input it one time and then these things are saved in for you to reference however many times you need to in the future some other cool features about the my macros plus app is you can edit your meal names so if you go over and click settings and then click edit meal name um, you'll see mine i have a bunch of different ones here um, i have a specific meal for my coffee if i put creamer or stuff that has actually calories in it so you can name your meals whatever you want when you first download the app i'm pretty sure it's just meal one through four or five um, and you can totally leave it like that but i personally like to see breakfast lunch snack before bed snack 
pre-workout, post-workout, so just so I know what I'm eating. Um, so I think that's really cool. And something else I really like about the My Macros Plus app is you can follow people on it. So let's say you wanted to follow me and see what I eat every day. Um, all you have to do is go down to the little, I guess it's a circle, it says My Circle, and you can search if you have a friend that uses the app or if you want to search me, my username is Fit Girl Moves. Um, you can just search for me, request to follow me and I just have to accept you and then we can view each other's or you can view my profile. I have to add you if I want to view yours. Um, but I think that's a really awesome thing and that's also a really great feature for coaches out there. So if you are a coach like I am, um, I have all of our clients use the My Macros Plus app, so I can request to follow them. And then you can also, if you swipe over on their, oops, so this person is one of my clients, I'm gonna swipe over, um, you'll see it says remove as a client, but if I swipe over on someone who's not a client, you can click to mark them as a client, which is really cool, and that just allows you to, um, see which clients you have on here and if they're actually doing what they should be doing. There's also a really cool feature of the My Macros Plus app called Macro Coach and it's essentially um, like a robot who's adjusting your macros. So this is cool if you're somebody who can't really afford a human coach. So basically the app will view what you ate for the week, what your weigh-ins were, and if you know it needs to make an adjustment based on what your goals are. So that's pretty much how the coaching feature works. Also, if you're somebody who needs to be reminded to eat, let's say you are the type of person that forgets to eat their meals, um, you can go to the meal timer and it will. you can set it to remind you to eat like every three hours or four hours or whatever you want it to be and a little alarm will go off. Also, if you go back to what your meals were, it will show you what time you actually logged the food. So this doesn't really work if you're somebody who pre-logs their day, which I highly suggest if you're new to tracking, um, but you can go and adjust what time you ate that meal afterwards if you wanted to by swiping over. So just another nifty little feature. And then also my Macros Plus is available in dark mode as of like yesterday, I think. So you can switch it to dark mode with the new Apple update if that's something that interests you. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you guys really quickly is just something that I personally prefer to see. So if you go to your daily meals, um, you'll notice on the bottom, mine says protein, carbs, fats, and fiber. So I like to look at those four things um, per meal instead of calories, just because I wanna make sure I'm eating enough fiber throughout the day. Um, so to change how that is set on your profile, you just have to go to app settings, and then you'll see right at the top here, it says change meal totals display. So I have it set for protein, carbs, fats, and fiber. You can switch that out to you know, anything that you want, saturated fat, um, car sugar, cholesterol, sodium, or calories. So I think that's really cool. And the last thing I wanted to address, because it was a common question, is if you're searching for a food, and let's say you can only find it in grams or ounces, um, but maybe you're looking for cups or tablespoons, or vice versa, um, I highly, highly suggest that you are always looking for grams or ounces or if it's a liquid milliliters just because cups and tablespoons isn't going to be a super accurate way to measure your food because more often than not you're going to overestimate what you're actually eating. So my challenge for you right now is to go get a tablespoon of peanut butter if you're somebody who uses cups and tablespoons to measure their food. Go get what you think a tablespoon of peanut butter is and then actually weigh out what a tablespoon of peanut butter is. And I guarantee you, you're eating more than you think, which can be a big problem if you are trying to lose body fat. So I highly, highly suggest searching for something that is listed in grams or ounces if it doesn't come up that way. Um, what you can do is Google it again one time. It's gonna take a little bit longer than necessary, but you can just Google what the nutrition facts should be and, in Google, you can search for something in grams usually, or ounces if you prefer that, um, and it will pop up and tell you. And on a nutrition label, if it's like a box of something you're eating, like bonza pasta, for example, it will say 
two thirds of a cup or whatever the serving size is. But then in parentheses, it does tell you the gram so that when you weigh it out, you know what you should be measuring. So that's just my little tip of the day as far as measuring your food. Always try to weigh it out using a food scale and use grams, ounces, or milliliters if you can. So at the end of the day, I highly suggest using my Macros Plus. I know it can be a big change coming from my fitness pal if that's something that you use for a long time, um, but I would say the biggest thing I hate about MyFitnessPal is one, how they charge you that monthly fee if you want to input your macros and grams, and two, just how they have that exercise calorie thing at the top. It just confuses a lot of people. It's not necessary. Tracking your calories burned isn't really accurate anyway and is not something that you should be focusing on. So if you are serious about tracking your macros and want to try something new, download the My Macros Plus app. Again, you can follow me on there at Fit Girl Moves, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. So if you did, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!